ancient pathogens. Then those are the hypotheses. Um, Blepharis spinulosa aqueous extract inhibits germination of Pidens pilosa, Amaranthus hybridus, Rhodbolia conchinchinensis, and Eleusin indica. And post emergent sprays of Blepharis spinulosa aqueous extract suppress chlorophyll content, height, and dry weight of Pidens pilosa. Amaranthus cybridus, Rhodbolia contingenensis, and Eleusin indica. Blepharis spinulosa aqueous extracts effectively inhibit radial growth and percent, and percent inhibition of, of uh, those selected uh, pathogens. And also post the sprays of uh, Blepharis spinulosa aqueous extracts effectively reduce disease incidence and severity of the pathogens of interest. Then the lab experiments and procedures are going to be carried out at the University of Zimbabwe at the Crop Science Department. And uh, the pot experiment are going to be done at Manikal and State University Farm in Headlands. And uh, for the cabbage seeds, uh, they're going to be uh, acquired at, uh, uh, we're going to acquire from seed co, uh, delight variety, and wheat seeds are going to be obtained from Henderson Research Station. Experiment one. Um, experiment one is more of a, um, of a petri dish. It's more of a lab experiment where uh, our uh, biomass preparations will be done. The, the Blepharis spinulosa uh, was obtained from Gokwe, where it was originally discovered, and it was sun dried. And um, in this case, I'm I'm going to be using the the seeds. So the seeds are going to be ground by hammer mill, and then uh, the powder is going to be uh, to be stored, awaiting use uh, usage. Then for the aqueous extractions, 50 grams of the powder is going to be um, to be diluted in one liter of distilled water to give a 5% solution. And it will be stayed for 24 hours at room temperature, um, 800 revs per, min, per, per minute with an orbital shelter. After that, it's going to be centrifuged at 4,000 revs per minute uh, for 15 minutes. And then after that, um, dilutions are going to be made that will produce a 1.25%, 0.5%, and 3.75% uh, concentrate. The treatments, uh, so which means there are going to be four treatments and they'll be replicated four times in, in the petri dish. And in each petri dish, there'll be 25 um, wheat seeds for each of the selected um, wheat species. And then a 5% concentrate will be used on the cabbage biases. And the parameters to be measured are going to be germination percentage, which is number of uh, germinated seeds over total number of seeds that were sown times 100. And then germination Vigo index, which is um, germination percentage times um, radical plus pumule length. Then for experiment two, I'm going to prepare the biomass as in experiment one, and also the aqueous extraction is going to be uh, as per experiment one. And this will be a four by four factorial and um, with the same amount of um, dilution uh, concentrations. I'm going to be using the same for experiment one and for experiment two. To. Only that um, in this experiment, I'll be using pot. I'll I'll be using pot cultures, and I'll spray the. And these concentrates will be sprayed on the. Um, on the leaf of the um, seedlings of the um, cabbage and the wheat seedlings at three to four leaf stage and um, the measurement parameters will be height of seedlings, chlorophyll content and dry weight. And for the um, for the chlorophyll content I'll be using a minota chlorophyll meter and I'll uh, for the cabbage I'll have to do it uh, 20, 24 uh, at 24 and 34 days after um, emergence. And then uh, for the um, 
what else? And then I'll spray using the rate of 200 liters per hectare. And also a visual of uh, phytotic assessment will be carried out from day of spray to day of uprooting the, the weeds and the cabbage. And then for experiment three, um, for extraction, um, the samples are going uh, for the samples are going to be ground to powder, which are the samples as per experiment one and two, the samples for for weed. And then one one 140 grams is going to be diluted in five five hundred mils of water, shaken on the orbital shaker twenty-four hours at hundred deaths per minute. Then the stock solution. Uh, for bid and spillosa seeds will be uh, zero, uh, which is distilled water, that, that will be the control, 0 0.5, uh, 1, 2.5, and 5 milligrams. And then um, for the isolation, samples, uh, will, the samples will be obtained from surrounding farms on suspected um, infected plants for all four uh, pathogens. And then they'll be uh, disinfected and then uh, placed on PDA media under UV light for seven days. Then the amended uh, PDA will, will, the PDA will be amended with streptomycin to inhibit any other uh, pathogens that are not of interest. And then the pathogens will be identified and then subcultured and stored. And then on the inoculation process, PDA containing five, con um, containing those five concentrations, including the control, are going to be added to uh, petri dishes we, uh, and the pathogen plugs along uh, which of the diseases of interest the pathogens of interest and they'll be sealed for for 12 days and the radial growth gradual growth will be calculated at three six and nine day intervals using a vinea caliper and the percentage inhibitor we use three six and nine days um yes and then so Hello. So kindly mute your mic. Quite much the same as for experiment three. Only that um here there is need to sterilize the soil uh so that we we get rid of un unwanted pathogens. Uh, on this case, there are quite a number of disease of interest, which are four. So inoculation processes will tend to differ depending on the on the type of inoculum that is going to be used and how the the pathogens usually enter the the plants. Um, then the disease symptoms will be obs uh, symptoms observations will be done from the seven of inoculation and then um, parameters to be measured are disease incidence and disease severity where disease incidence is number of symptomatic plants over total number of plants that were planted and then the severity uh, will mainly be using a scale that uh, rates from one to nine, one being less severe and um, nine being most severe. And then data analysis, I'll uh, use Microsoft Excel to enter data, gen start, then normally tests will be done. And if they adhere to ANOVA, then I'll use the ANOVA. And then other studio for tables and graphs. And then that will be my budget my expected budget which is which i think very much that um will be more than this and then that's my work plan the the plan is to start writing the thesis now uh bit by bit and then the um my 
and then to start data collection as soon as there is everything that is to collect and to and to write it down so that I don't miss anything. And then the expected outcome is to produce a successful allelopathy experiment in controlling the weeds and diseases of interest. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any comments or questions? I saw something like a uh, fuse lead in one of your treatments. Is it fuse lead? Mm. Oh, sorry. If I... it's not, don't worry about it. Uh, it was fuse lead, but I thought I had removed, not fusarium, because I thought I had removed it because it wasn't matching with my, with my objectives. Okay. Yes. Any other comments? Yes, yes, Doc. Yes. I saw quite a number of experiments and I'm worried about actually the major goal, the major target of this study. What, what is it that you want to really derive as a take-home message across all the experiments that you, you presented to us i think maybe dealing with one one weed species would be very narrow so maybe increasing the weed species or maybe i could do two of both two pathogens and two weeds if it's too big if it's too large an experiment yeah you have yeah. half a minute to wrap it up 30 seconds only. Okay. I said you have got 30 seconds to wrap it up. <laughs> we can move on to... Is it Lulu? Because literature should actually point. Can we move on to the next uh, presenter? It's Muguyo. Is Muguyo around? Uh, uh, she's not there. So we can move on to the next. Okay, Mumutu. Is he around? I, I so we move on to. Is what he around? He's is, is not. He's not yet back. Uh, so we, we move on to Miranda. Miranda is around. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so to show my presentation, do you end up at your entire screen or a window? Go to window. Window, okay. Okay. When you end up, I said, I said, I said, I said, if you go to window, my presentation. If you open up your presentation, if I go to, I used to put it, I used to put it, um, I used to put it party, yeah, our, our call. Okay, Miranda, what kind of can you present now? You can choose a window, and it then you know, Kupa option, you could choose the. The window or the open, you just select on your your PowerPoint presentation, and it is already open. PowerPoint presentation now. No, it. I end up akanzi, akanzi present now, auntie. Yes. And then I end up akanzi a window. 
So yes. the moment I press the option, it will share an application window. Okay, window. Rawaka open as a machine park, or is it your presentation? Can I would Open it's, uh, hey. um, it's the call, yes. Open a open PowerPoint presentation. Here. Okay, then I come back. Yes, try again. Or I think, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, back. Can you see my presentation? No. Yes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is it okay now? See. Yeah. Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to be presenting on an assessment of pets in multicultural crops grown in Chivu. My name is Miranda Mzorandoga and my supervisor is Dr. Mabasa. So in Southern Africa, vegetable production is fast transforming from the traditional backyard production to more intensive systems, specific, especially in areas with supplementary irrigation. We would realize that in the Southern region, vegetables are valuable. They are valuable relish and they provide dietary vitamins and minerals, especially in the largely maize-based rural households. The most direct economic impact of pest or disease is the loss or reduced efficiency of cultural production. Many types of insect pests have the potential to damage fruit and vegetable crops, and this may be in form of direct injury. In this case, we have the pests feeding on our crops or in the direct damage to the crop where we don't have the pests directly biting on our crop, but rather just injecting through maybe the bruising on our crops. Due to difficulty in monitoring insect pests, the application of insecticide has been put in place. So these are applied, due, they're applied according to calendar schedules. But however, because of um, there's, um, what can I say, I'm sorry. There's an evolution in our insect body parts or the form in which they feed on our crops and this is mostly because of my pest my pesticides in applications so now these calendars they don't seem to be very effective and they have to be revisited over and over again and amongst amongst the most common types of detrimental insects are the are of the leptidoptera family and these include moths and butterflies and then the homoptera, and these include our aphids and our leaf hoppers. The losses in agriculture can be as high as 45% in crop fields, where we have extensive pesticide use and tolerance of pest damage of vegetables is often very low. So this is detrimental for our farmers, especially those that try to practice organic farming. Because if we have our um, losses as high as 45%, now, farmers that are using pesticides to control these pests, how, how about in organic practicing farmers? Farmers have to control pests whether the vegetables are grown for home consumption or for sale. This ensures that our farmers get value for, for their money. On this diagram, uh, it shows impact of crop protection technologies on production. So on the on your far on your far left side, there is the scenario without crop protection. According to our key, we have losses due to weeds, the black part pathogens, and then the white part are the viruses in the animal case, and then the dark gray part that's our yield. So we have this is just a scenario, and then we have uh, with the arrows we have effect of crop protection, and then with CP, and then with P we have the effect of pesticide use. So our attainable yield at one. So for our far left side, this is the scenario without crop protection. So without crop protection, we realize that our yields are like really low. They are very low. And loss due to weeds is occupying the greater part, followed by the loss due to pathogens, viruses, and animal pests. And then in our current situation, what's on the ground? 
we have uh, effect of crop protection coming in and our yield is very high. Our actual yield is very high. And reach where our yield is, but then it is higher than the scenario without crop protection. And then the actual losses are actually lessened when we, Im when we implement crop protection technology. And then we have on our far right, we have the scenario without pesticide use. Our yield is higher than the scenario without crop protection, but then not higher than our current situation. Then the losses due to implementation of the pesticide use, we have the losses due to weeds, pathogens, viruses, and animal pests lessened to they lessened compared to any other part on the graph. Crop protection technology effectiveness. So the, on this graph again, it shows us potential loss and then actual loss. So I'm just going to read on the side. Average efficacy of pest control practices worldwide in reducing loss potential of pathogens, viruses, animal pests, and weeds, respectively. Reduction rates calculated from estimates of monetary production losses in barley, cotton seed, maize, oil seed, potatoes, rice, soya bean, cotton, sugar beets, tomatoes, and wheat in 2001 to 2003. So our actual losses are, lo are lower than potential loss due to the crop protection technologies that are being implemented. Slide. We have the current and future crop protection technologies. These should be implemented by the farmer throughout the year. IPM, integrated pest management. There's forecasting, there's pest trapping. In pest trapping, we'll be talking about maybe fly traps or tuta traps. Tuta now is prevalent in our tomato crops. And then we have monitoring, constant monitoring by the farmer to manage the pests before they get out of hand. Then we have thresholds. We determine when it's the maximum point where we have control our pests. Then we have cultural controls. Under cultural controls, we have the implementation of biological, like living organisms, control the that are being a nuisance in the crops. And then we also have use of resistant cultivars and cultural controls. Then chemical controls, this is we bring in our chemicals, our pesticides, our insecticides. And then record keeping will also help for us to determine what the future season might bring for us, depending on the area, depending on the soil type. And then soil preparation, it involves soil conditioning. And then the planting part, this involves crop rotation. It might also in involve the planting depth. Then we move on to our next slide. Pest prevention based on pesticide or integrated pest management. So we have pesticide induced vulnerable crops. These inc they increase long-term costs because now with these induced vulnerable crops, that means the pests the pest can just wipe through. And then we have increased pest resistance because if we keep on using the same chemicals and yet the, pe the, 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 pe the, the crop is now vulnerable, then it doesn't work. So if we're going to keep putting the, the same, we're going to keep putting the same chemicals, then we're going to have pest resistance increased human exposure. Of late, some chemicals have been banned because they've realized that there's chemical residue that is remaining in the crop that it can actually be harmful to the humans. And then we have increased environmental risk. This is where EMA comes in, where some of this, some of this pesticide residue residues, they remain in the soil and might cause future problems in human health. And then we have the resistant crop maintained by integrated pest management. What are the benefits? We have human health and environmental benefits. This is just vice versa of the pest induced vulnerable crop. And then we also have prolonged efficacy tools. This means we will not need to keep implementing new, new ways of eradicating this, these insects if the ones that we implement by integrated pest management prove to be very effective. 
this basically just explains what integrated pest management is. It's a sustainable approach to managing pests by combining biological, cultural, physical, and chemical tools in a way that minimizes economic health and environmental risks. This was by the Food Conservation and Energy Act of 2008. My, my objectives are as follows. Number one, to determine the most frequent pests in horticultural crops grown by smallholder farmers in Chivu. The second one is to determine methods which are used to control pests by farmers. Then the last one is to, to describe crop protection for the future. My, my hypothesis is pests which are reported by farmers are most likely to be the most frequent pests in horticultural crops. The second one is farmers are likely to use chemicals for the control of pests. Materials and methods. This survey will be conducted in Chivu and I've chosen to conduct with farmers in three sites. And these farmers are supposed to be horticultural crop farmers. At each site, I've decided to conduct with 15 farmers. These are the ones I'll be interviewing concerning the prevalence of pests in their crops. A questionnaire will be used to get information on horticultural production practices. The questionnaire will be coded and data will be put on Excel spreadsheet. GenStat will be used to generate frequency tables and carry out chi-square tests to determine important relationships in the results that I would have acquired from the farmers. The structure of the questionnaire, I've just put a bit of the questions that are going to be present on the questionnaire. So some of the questions in include name of the farmer, the soil type, and what are the most important insect pests? This is my work plan for the project. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Any, any comments or questions from the presenter? Or on the presentation? Yes, I, I have questions and comments for Miranda. Okay, Doc. What's the title of your study, by the way? Assessment of Pests and Horticultural Crops in Chivu. Okay. What do you want to assess? Uh, I'd want to assess the prevalent crops in our region for the horticultural farmers that are in Chivu. And to, the reason why I used three, three sides so that we can determine if everyone else around Chivu is facing the same challenges with the same impact of the same pace. Are you targeting specific pests? Not really, just the prevalent ones. Oh, okay, and then your objectives? My objectives, let me go to the slides. Um, to determine the most frequent pests in horticultural crops grown by smallholder farmers in Chivu, and then to determine methods which are used to control pests by farmers. Then the third one is want, to describe crop protection for the future. You are saying you want to, to describe crop the, protection the, for the future. You, you, you need me to read them all out the, again. Sorry, do you want to determine methods that are currently being used? Or you want to sorry, no, I didn't get you. Do you want to determine methods which are Pardon? currently being I'm referring to your second objective. You are saying you want to determine methods. Yes, doc. Is it to determine or to identify? Uh, I, I think it's to identify the methods which are used to control pests by farmers. What are farmers currently doing at the moment? In Chivu, some of them are practicing organic farming, uh, but most of them, they are using chemicals to control so their pests. Do you pace. think you are likely to get a new method that is being used by farmers in Chivu? Something that has not yet been I reported. I didn't get that. Do you think there are farmers who are using new strategies to manage pests? 
in Jivo? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think the only reason maybe why I wouldn't know about that is because I haven't exactly yeah. looked into it. Hence the need for me to identify all of their methods that they're using to control their peace. And the last objective to describe crop protection, what are you trying to say? For the last objective, what I'm trying to say is there are better ways of improving, if there are better ways or rather ways to improve the methods that are, they are already using right now, it might make a difference for farmers in the future. Do you think it's necessary to describe those crop protection methods? I'm how not sure, dog. Maybe you could help. Test that objective. Mm. I I hadn't put that into consideration. Okay, then my last comment: How are you going to analyze the data that is going to be collected in this study? Oh, I'll use uh, I'll use frequency tables. In the case that we're going to be having pests into certain groups, since we're going to be using only the prevalent pests, so maybe we have different groups or number of groups, and then we then use. We are going to use frequency tables to present that, but how is the data going to be analyzed? The data that we are going to present. How are you going to analyze it? I'm lost. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure the question. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Rigari, um, maybe you could help me on that one. We will talk after the presentations. Okay, Doc. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, can I come in? Yes, Doc. Okay. I think I, I also have similar feelings as uh, Dr. Rigari's feelings. Mm. Actually, on the okay. topic, eh? to me, on the topic, on the the topic sounds misleading. Okay. To me, it suggests that what cultural crops grown in Chivu are different from those grown elsewhere in Zimbabwe, or which has uniquely different production constraints that do not actually that are not present in other regions in Zimbabwe. So, oh, okay. I'm failing to understand why you actually state Please, please come again. Hello? Hello? Can you still hear me? Don't take time to. Hello? Hello? It looks we have lost the doctor captain. Oh, okay. Anyway, I think we can stop it. Uh, we, we can end it here. Yeah. We, we can always continue with it so that uh, we move on to the next uh, presenter. Okay, Doc, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And we have Muguyo. Uh, what I'm here can I do for Tumba? 
Okay, we can move on to Tetiwe. Okay, Dr. Andiribo. All right. Uh, you, you can go ahead and uh, present. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yeah. After. Okay. Yeah. Are you seeing my screen? Are you seeing my my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can see. It says yeah. Yes, we can see. Yes, we can see. It. Yes. We can see it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Tetu and Joe. I'm going to present on the topic evaluation of band application of atrazine and jewel for the control of weeds in maize and a small water sector. Okay, my supervisor is Dr. Mabasa. Uh, here's my introduction. Uh, delayed weed control in maize is one of the major factors which cause maize yield reduction. This is according to Chivinge 1990. Hand hoeing is the most widely used method in small order sector, which lowered the quality of life in small order sector due to high weed pressure. Small older farmers, they spend about 75% of their time battling with weeds and timely weed control is really achieved. Each season, small older farmers, uh, they invest about 35 to 70% of the total labor on weed control, which exceeds total labor requirement for all other field operations combined. Uh, hired labor is mostly unavailable and if it is available, it will be very expensive. Despite its demerits, the end owing method will remain present as long as the small order sector is present. But to lessen its burden on the farmer, the end owing should be integrated with other control methods as indicated by Mandumbu. The use of pre and herbicides have a great potential to be used in the maize and a small old sector, but the herbicides are hardly used by small older farmers due to high costs associated. Bended herbicide targeted to selectively suppress weed emergence within the crop row and applied in a bend over the crop using the same tank mixture could be used uh, with the supplementary oxidron cultivator weeding to reduce weed pressure and reduce weed management costs. Problem statement. And owing as the most commonly used method uh, in the small order sector is the following drawbacks is indicated by Mandungu 2011. That is high labor intensive, inefficient, slow in area coverage. And some weeds, they are morphologically similar to the other crops at an early vegetative uh, stage, for example, the shamba grass and maize. On the other hand, use of herbicide full cover spray application is not feasible to most small water farmers due to high cost associated per given area. Then, bended herbicide application integrated with ox drone cultivation will be started to determine. Its effect on reducing weed pressure in the early crop stage, uh, reducing herbicide cost, and reducing weeding burden faced by the farmers to increase maize grain yield. Justification. When the herbicide application costs a fraction of the full label recommended dosage and therefore attractive to cash strapped small water farmers, then the herbicide, uh, the herbicide application 
Yes, another additional advantage of reducing ecosystem contamination. The study is designed to provide insight into the possibility of controlling weed pressure on crops, reducing weed management costs using blended website application integrated with ox drone cultivation. The study uh, is also designed to reduce uh, severe labor bottlenecks suffered by the small water farmer at peak weeding periods. Uh, objectives, my main objective. The aim of the study is to develop a low input here beside weed management strategies that can increase maize grain yield while reducing the impact of weeds and can be easily integrated by smallholder farmers in their day-to-day -day weed management systems. Uh, specific objective number one, the study is based on evaluating the feasibility of combining banded website application and ox drone cultivation in maize to control weed population during the early crop stage and grain yield evaluation. Uh, uh, specific objective number two, uh, is the study is also to examine the cost associated with the bended herbicide integrated with ox drone cultivation. A hypothesis. Bended herbicide integrated with ox drone cultivation have an effect on wheat population and grain yield. Bended herbicide integrated with ox drone cultivation have an effect on weed management cost. Uh, on methodology, my study site, the trials will be carried out in Mashona and West Makonde district, which receives a minimum rainfall of uh, 700 mils, millimeters per season, and the temperatures, they range from 18 to 32 degrees Celsius, and the area receives rainfall, but sometimes experiences mid-season uh, dry spells. The experimental sites will be selected randomly. My project is designed. The design of the project is a randomized complete block design with the three treatments and 15 sites replicated twice. Number of treatments with 43, number of farmers or sites 15, total number of plots 90, replica uh, replications with got two. Now net plot size is five meters by three rows. Then the gross plot measurement uh, is eight meters by four. Point 0.5. Then treatment description. Uh, treatment number one, hand wowing. Uh, hand wowing will be done two weeks after crop emergence and three weeks after the first weeding on 30 plots. Full cover uh, pre emergent herbicide display is going to be done one after one to two days, uh, one to two days after planting. And we'll be using a extra zin at the rate of 3.6 liters per hectare and dual at the rate of a one liter per hectare. Each plot receiving 12.6 mils of extra zin and 3.6 mils of dual on 30 plots. Then bended pre image and herbicide application is going also to be done one to two days after planting. And the extra zin is going to be used at the rate of 1.8 liters per hectare dual at the rate of 0 0.5 liters per hectare, uh, each plot receiving 6.3 mils of atrazine and 1.8 mils of dual directed spray over the planted area of 45 centimeters worth. Uh, data to be collected, uh, the parameter on the other side of the parameter and the records uh, to be taken. On plantings, uh, I'm going to record the planting depth and plant population on plant growth stages, uh, I'm going to record days to 50% tasseling, days to 50% silking, and days to physiological maturity. Then on field operations, I'm going to record uh, here beside application deaths uh, and rates, here beside and end rowing deaths, ox drone cultivation deaths. Then on here with species density, I'm going to record uh, species identified and counts. I'm going to use a 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter quadrant uh, thrown randomly three times uh, in each plot. Uh, data analysis, I'm going to use GenStat analysis 
all data will be subjected to analysis of variance. That's uh, my skeletal ANOVA with treatments of two degrees of freedom uh, blocks, uh, 14 degrees of freedom, error, 73 degrees of freedom, uh, total, 89 degrees of freedom. On budget, I'm going to uh, give value on the following items. Then uh, they are going to be costed as uh, below, as indicated on the table. On work plan, I'm going to follow uh, the normal cropping season starting from September up to August. Thank you. Okay. Any questions and contributions to the presenter? Yes. I have questions. Objectives. How many blocks do we have? Uh, okay, uh, we will start with the Dr. Gary, then we move on to Dr. Kamtan. Uh, is there a reason why you use the capital letters? Uh, no reason, Dr. My eyes is there, not here. Good, my sight. I've got a poor sight, so I I've used the capital letters for for me to read well. Yeah, but we we don't usually do that. But anyway, okay. Then on your specific objectives, the second specific of in fact, all your specific objectives are not uh, specific. This first okay. objective. Is saying the study is based on evaluating. That is not how you write specific objectives. Okay. Yeah. So I think you need to revisit that area. And then I'm going and, to revisit the area. Yes. And then the second specific objective, the study also examined the cost associated with bandit. So this objective suggests that you are going to carry out an economic analysis. Yet I did not see the methodology for that in your materials and method section. Okay, do I, doctor, I'm going to include that. But I think on, on my budget, I have included uh, labor hours you used for weeding. But to estimate you, weeding cost. But some of your strategies combine manual and the chemical weed control methods and yes. you need to cost all those yes i'm going to to include it in other words I, i'm saying that part is missing you need to include it not okay, just in doctor, the okay. okay doctor i'm done uh, dr kamtando um all right thanks doc uh i would want you to to tell me the number of blocks that she has in the experimental design i have uh, 15 blocks doctor 15 blocks mm. why why is the number okay I can see number of farmers slash sites. What does that mean? Uh, those are the blocks, Doctor. Are I blocks different from farmer. replications? Are blocks different from replications? Yes, they are. Wow. Isn't this an RCBD design? It is, Doctor. So for an RCBD design, you have replications, you also have blocks. Eh, uh, yes. Where does that happen? It's the first time that I'm hearing about it. 
I need to be corrected, doctor. Maybe I'm lost. Why you really need factor? help? So what is the blocking factor? I did it. What are you blocking against? Soil type, rainfall, and temperatures. Okay, also slow precipitation. Actually, the big the biggest problem is only experimental design. You really need okay, to doctor. sit down with anyone who can help you so that you do the right thing. Okay, doctor. If you can also assist. Okay. I hope you have taken those uh, points. We can now move on to the next uh, presenter. Who has just arrived? Uh, did I not? You are now back. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you can uh, go ahead now. Thank you. Renders, please try not to exceed 10 minutes. Can you see my screen now? No, we can see you. <laughs> Oh, but now, not yet. <coughs> yes, we can see it. That's fine. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Zizai Kelet Monotu. Um, I'm working my my I'm research not. proposal is. Can you come again? Yes, go ahead. All right. My research topic is on um, evaluation of different maize-based cropping systems in full armyworm management. So, uh, the background to this is that uh, full armyworm, as full armyworm, as we all know, uh, it is a voracious uh, insect pest that has affected several uh, agricultural fields. Originally, uh, it came from North and South America, and then it was first report recorded. Um, or first identified in the African in the African continent in 2016. So, for me, there's a wide range of uh, uh, feeding materials that he that he. Just, Are you moving your slides? I, I'm I'm on background. We are still on slide one. Okay. Can you see now? Yes. Okay. So it is a, it is a, it attacks a wide range of plant species, uh, over 250 of them, but um, it does have a strong affinity, or it does prefer to feed on maize when compared to other uh, food crops. That's in this case, it it uh, impacts uh, incomes and food security for millions of farmers. Uh, to add on to that, for armyworm, is has been estimated. Uh, it does. Uh, it is anticipated that it can cause destructions to 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 those to those 250 above 250 plant species, a damage that is valued at above 13 um, billion US dollars per annum in sub-Saharan Africa. So, because it is a major threat to most to to to, to most uh, continents, the response with the most farming community communities has been the indiscriminate use of uh, chemical pesticides 
which we as we as we understand has got some health implications uh, to humans when we feed if it is not done responsibly as well as uh, it also causes some serious challenges to the environment but we need to consider the aspect of uh, integrated pest management strategies which largely depend on uh, the on natural enemies so this study uh, it generally seeks to offer culturally low cost pest control strategies that can be integrated into existing efforts uh, so that we try as much as possible to minimize the losses that are being occurred uh, at farms that are being occurred with uh, several countries as well as the continents. So integrated approaches that are climate smart and sustainable to the environment, they've got to be studied so that we have a more comprehensive approach to overcoming the challenges that we are facing as posed by four hundred. So, as for the problem statement, uh, forming is a threat to food security that requires an IPM approach to minimize impacts. Uh, the study it then seeks to, 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 to find alternative cultural methods to reduce yield losses and improve the farmer's income because what we want when we get into the fields or what the farmers anticipate is to get uh, some reasonable profits, but we also need to, cons to ensure that we, 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 ens we, we do these things responsibly uh, or sustainably. So pesticide cont contamination in the, in the environment is on the rise because generally there is an abuse or overuse of agrochemicals, some of which is uh, irresponsible. So this challenge requires proactive action uh, to contain it so that we save the ecosystems, we ensure that uh, the natural enemies that exist in the ecosystems, they continue to thrive and support, and support life. As we as we all know it. So my objectives are to study the effect of intercropping maize and cowpea on a uh, four amium population, cowpea the vigna unguculata, and to study the effect of tillage systems in managing four amium densities. So my now hypothesis is a uh, intercropping maize and cowpeas has no effect in the distribution of four amium. Uh, the second one. Tillage practices have no effect in reducing four armyworm densities. The alternative hypothesis, hypothesis intercropping maize and cowpeas has an effect in the distribution of four armyworm. Then tillage practices have an effect in reducing four armyworm densities. And for the materials and methods, uh, the study should be based on generally on soil management uh, and intercropping. Though that is a breakdown of my uh, of my treatments, the treatments that I'm looking at. Uh, the first one, which is the control, is a monoculture maize uh, by conventional tillage. And the second one, maize plus cowpea intercrop under conventional tillage. The second, the third one, monoculture maize um, under minimum tillage that is mulched. The fourth one, maize and cowpea intercrop, that is under minimum tillage and uh, mulching. This shall be carried uh, a, the, under a RCBD with four treatments in a fully factorial design. So my work plan is as follows. Uh, I'm going to, to, to be using two sites to conduct the study. One at UZ Farm, which is a clay site, and then the second one at Dombosha Training Center, which generally is characterized by sandy soils. Planting uh, has been done in November in the 2020 in the 2020 21 season. We shall be installing uh, pheromone traps uh, at three weeks from the date of planting, and monitoring shall be done on a weekly basis. Scouting shall also be done every three weeks from the date of planting. So um, that is the general layout of, uh, of uh, my, my, uh, my fields. The maize plots will be, my plots will be 16.2 meters by 16.2 meters long. That means it will contain uh, 18, 18, 18, 18 rows of the crop space. That is nine meters and the core plot shall be uh we shall be moving 3.6 meters uh, from the border and discarding four rows from the other side 
And then what the, the, the right picture shows uh, the maize cowpea intercrop plot, where we are going to be having uh, two rows of, uh, of, the, of, our, of the maize and then two rows again of cowpea, again discarding the same area, uh, considering the co the co plot and considering uh, uh, what we call it, the border rows is previously discussed. So that would be the general layout of my of my uh, trial site. Uh, where we have a uh, conventional tillage and um, okay, that is the general layout of the plot is I highlighted um, from these uh, treatments where we have the monoculture and uh, the monoculture maize, conventional tillage, minimum tillage, and uh, and mounting. So I decided to abbreviate those accordingly. And for the data collection parameters, I shall be assessing the abundance of, uh, of four annuum. In this case, I'm looking at, uh, we shall be monitoring uh, the egg masses on leaves, the uh, larva populations, and also monitoring the, the, the pheromone traps. We're also going to look at the damage um, of uh, four annuum uh, on the leaves. Uh, there is a guide that is that is a semi standard guide that we that we shall be using. Then we shall be use, we shall also be looking at abundance and deficit of insect predators because remember we said we want to to have a method that is more sustainable. So we would want to check uh, on these two sides if there is an, a, a, a a diversity of our insect pests uh, that will be existing in those fields. So for that we shall be using some traps. Three of which will be applied will be will be in, installed within a field um, in the in the ground so that we capture uh, insects as much as possible. Then we have uh, uh, four um, uh, parasitic percentages in the uh, I, I identity of parasitoids. Then we also look at uh, the cob or ear damage. This is also going to be scaled according to semi standards, as well as we're going to consider the grain yield so that we can then be able to look at uh, possible recommendations uh, where cultural methods have, impro have significantly uh, improved or where impact of the four arm has been less, but more yields have been realized. Then the data analysis shall be, the data shall be analyzed using uh, GeneStat uh, version 14. And then um, the project shall be funded by CIMIT, uh, who, have been, who, shall, who shall be providing uh, all the necessary resources that we have required uh, in, when, when, when conducting the study, to whom I am uh, thankful for giving me such an opportunity. Thank you. Thanks uh, yes. very much. Uh, any questions or contributions yes. to this uh, project? Yes, uh, Caleb. Yes, sir. <coughs> um, you say the... Okay, what are the factors that are going to be used in this experiment? You say it's a factorial. Yet I did not see the factors. I only saw four treatments. Okay. Um, I am I am going to be assessing. Um, probably I didn't put it right. Uh, it's RCBD laid down as a factorial experiment. Because I'm thinking the two factors that we have are tillage, the, the tillage practices and uh, intercropping. Oh, okay, how many tillage systems do you have? Can you come again, sir? How many, how many levels systems? of intercropping? How many we levels have two for levels. the vector? Okay. Uh, it's two levels for intercropping and then two levels 
for tillage. I don't think that is correct. We also see mulch there. We also see mulching. How are you taking that into account? Um, uh, my, the tillage practice that we have, uh, it's a conventional tillage and the, the, the minimum tillage. But uh, I, I are you didn't the one who designed this experiment? Are you the one who designed this experiment? In partly. Sir. Huh? Partly. Partly. Yes, sir. Who assisted you? Uh, Doctor Mon. I think you did not take time to understand the experiment. Okay, and the data analysis, how is it going to be done? We shall be using uh, the GenStat to analyze the, the collected data. Okay, the, the GenStat is just a software. I want the test that is going to be performed. To compare the treatment effects. The, the randomized complete block design. That is not a test. It's a, an experimental design. It's okay. Any other issues? Okay, thanks very much. We can move on to the next. Is Lulumuguyo present now? She said she's coming to use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I had, I had issues on the design. Oh, oh yeah, you, you can uh, comment. You want to comment on the design? Dr. Kamtan. Okay, you can always pick it uh, later on. Yeah, I also had issues on this. Yeah, I had issues on this. The design yeah the, the sound is uh, can you hear me it's really confusing yeah he, he really needs to Yeah, I think at some point uh, to think deeper about this. People are going to sit down and, and scoring, look at it. For four AMOM incidences. Yes, I really need to the one to nine score incidences. Okay. So can we move on to the next? Nota Miss, are you around? Yes, Doc. Yeah, you can uh, go ahead. Can you still present now? 
Yes, I'm writing my presentation. Okay. Can you see my presentation? No, not yet. Yeah, it's coming. Yes. So I can start. Yes, you can start. Um, my name is Nota Messi, and I'm going to be looking at suppression of effects of Lanzana Camara biomass and leaf aqueous extracts on the wheat in selected horticultural crops, which, will, which are the onions, peas, and carrots. And my supervisor is going to be Dr. Mabash. Uh, Lantana, Lantana Camara is a perennial aromatic shrub of the Fibanesi family, which is also known as the sage plant. It is considered as one of the most uh, invasive plants due to, the, to its allelopathic potential it possesses. Um, allelopathy is an important factor in the succession and establishment of Lantana Camara, uh, which makes it a very invasive and um, it also makes the studies on the phytotoxicity of its extract as a basis for the development of a new herbicide. Uh, Allelo chemicals are known as bioactive secondary metabolites released into the environment as accidents, which are volatile or residues of the plant tissue. And this provides the opportunity for research, which poses for prominent episode of properties in manipulation of uh, allelopathy in root management combined with successor crops are capable of reducing uh, the population of weeds by means of their potential allelopathy. Allelopathy, allelopathy may be also useful in minimizing arising problems in present agriculture, especially in the small the farmers such as uh, environmental population pollution, human health concerns, depletion of uh, crop density and soil sickness, as well as um, reducing the use of synthet synthetic compounds, which are commonly used in agriculture. Um, by doing a little part, we are trying to to, 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 to shift to organic farming, uh, bringing about safe uh, chemicals in weed management, as well as the environmental management. Uh, we are also trying to reduce crop quality and uh, we are also trying to increase crop quality and quantity, uh, which, is, which arises from the misuse of, uh, misuse of uh, herbicides. And also there is the residual, there's residual, residual effects of herbicides, which arises in, the, in herbicide applications in trying to control weeds, as well as uh, the high cost of herbicides in trying to control weeds causes a problem in uh, farmers, especially uh, the small older farmers. Some of the herbicides which are being used in, in the present agriculture are now um, identified as toxic and carcinogenic uh, to, to humans and animals of concern. So in trying to solve these problems, we are trying to find the cheaper methods, cheaper methods which can be used by small older farmers, which may be incorporated uh, in crop management and integrated uh, pest management in trying to solve with problems. The use of allelo chemicals as herbicides is safe and effective methods as they are natural um, products which can be biodegradable uh, and non-persistent in the soil pollutants, thereby they may be used or incorporated in crop rotation systems. Um, the use of uh, allelo chemicals as herbicides uh, 
um, may lower the impact of environment and human uh, degradation, uh, which are caused by synthetic compounds commonly used in agriculture. And this also provides the opportunity for research which with the new chemicals in entities which um, with prominent herbicide properties. And these are also used to improve or increase conservation agricultural techniques um, is, is a, a safe method of um, weed control, weed management in fields. Uh, the overall objective is to evaluate the allelopathic uh, effects of leaf extracts of plantana camara on the germination images and the growth of onion, peas, and carrots. Uh, specific, specific objective number one is to evaluate the allelopathic effects of leaf extracts of lantana camara on the germination, plume, and radical growth of onion, peas, and carrots. Uh, and um, specific objective number two is to evaluate the allelopathic potential of leaf biomass of lantana camara on the emergence height uh, and the emergence in the height of onion peas in carrots. The hypothesis is, is that um, number one, Lantana camara biomass uh, and leaf extracts do not suppress the, the germination and growth of onions and peas. Number two, Lantana camara biomass and leaf ex extracts uh, suppress the growth of weeds. Um, this experiment will be carried out at the University of Zimbabwe uh, crop size department with laboratory and the materials which are going to be used are dried in the pound lantana camara leaves. Uh, the laboratory experiment will consist of um, uh, water extracts from lantana camara pound leaves uh, which are going to be used in concentrations of 25, 50, 75, and 100% uh, in the controlled uh, distilled water. Uh, the experiment will be randomized complete design with four replicates. The different residue levels will be mixed with distilled water to make, uh, to make up the four concentration levels. Uh, and the, and the seed, the crop seeds, which are the onions, carrots, and tomatoes, will be put into separate <coughs> petri dishes of 10 seeds per petri dish and are going to be sterilized with 1% of sodium chloride. Um, and then regular addition in, a, in equal amounts of the extras will be added in each petri dish uh, in respective concentration levels to prevent drying off of the crop seeds. Then measuring of the germination of seeds will be done and germination will be said to occur when the radicals are two millimeters long. Um, then the, on data collection, there's going to be evaluation of these physiological parameters, which, which is the germination rate, the speed, the germination speed index, seedling performance, um, the germination percentage, and the meantime germination. The recordings are going to be done uh, if, after every 24 hours until ge no germination occurs. And these are the formulas which are going to be used to calculate the germination uh, germination index, the speed index, germination rate, uh, and all the physiological parameters which are going to be measured. Then the potted experiments um, are going to be used, we are going to use dry leaf biomass and the residue concentrations of 0 0.5 and 1 gram uh, which are going to be used in sand and clay soils separately, and the design is going to, to be a complete randomized design with uh, four replicates, and then data collection will be done. And the data analysis will be done using the ARA statistical package, and the data will be pres presented in tables and graphs using the SIGMA plot software. 
the skeletal ANOVA for the experiments have not been filled is we are still discussing um, on the on the actual um, on the actual uh, experimental designs which could fit this experiment. And this is the work plan, which is going to start in uh, in April, where there's already been um, Lantana Kamara collection in drying and pounding. And the literature review is going to run from April to December. Uh, data collection will be done uh, at the same time as the experiment runs in May and June. Then data analysis will be done uh, from July, June and July, and the final uh, thesis submission will be done in December. The, the total budget um, is at $270, um, including transport materials and materials and apparatus, as well as the other costs which may incur. Thank you. Okay. Any questions and contributions to the presenter? Uh, thank you very much. What is the title of your study? The title of my study is The Suppression Effect of Plantana Camara Biomass in Leaf Actuous Extras on, the, on Weed in Selected Horticultural Probes, which are onions, peas, and carrots. And then please go to your objectives. I can't see any weeds. We did not mention any weeds in those objectives. It was actually an error of omission. Okay, so how many weed species are you going to use in this study? Is we test species? We had and we we actually had and decided on that. Oh, so maybe that's the reason why they are not appearing in your objectives. Yes. And why do you want to use leaf extracts of Landana Camara in those three crops? Um, as of now, the spread of Landana Camara is quite at a large scale in, 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 in the surrounding areas. So we want to take advantage of it instead of it as being uh, an invasive plant which is killing off uh, the soils uh in the environment we actually want to to, to to take advantage of the benefits which we might get from Lantana camara and incorporate it into the present day agriculture so in other words you are saying you you think Lantana camara should be removed on the list of invasive alien species not really but we are trying to to to, to find the advantages of Lantana Camara, which might help the, the, the environment other than its negative effects on the environment. We already know that it produces a, a little chemical. So now we are trying to screen those little chemicals uh, to see if they have no effect on, the, on, on certain crops which we may use. Okay, how are you going to screen them? Um, by testing to see if uh, it affects the, 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 the germination and growth of, of, of horticultural crops. Because the effect of Ladana Camara extracts on weed species is known. That's why I'm saying there's nothing new there. Do you think you produce any new information? Okay, then okay, then let's move on to your the summer way you were talking about germination speed index, germination rate, all those indices.
Okay. So what is the importance of germination speed index? And in what way is it different from germination rate? I'm not sure of the two, but I think they were, they were in effect on um, on how they um, they get to absorb um, they get to absorb nutrients when they when the seeds are growing. You see, all those indices that you listed are calculated using the same information using germination uh, data so i don't see the reason why you need all those indices Are you there? I'll take note of that. Doctor. Okay. Any other issues? Can I come in? Yes, you can come in, Dr. Gamtanta. Hello, Dr. Damtando. We seem to be losing his contact. Yeah, his internet is misbehaving. I think you are safe now. You can exit. <laughs> It all failed to connect the dog. Okay. So we are done. No, so, is not here. no uh, time. Lulungu you are has just arrived. <laughs> huh? Lulungu has arrived. Where? Let's use it. Okay, is she ready to present? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, she's just transferring your documents to my laptop. Okay. But next time you should come for the exam for the exam on time. This is an oral examination. <laughs> Dr. Kamtando. Uh, hello, Dr. Kamtando. Yeah, I'm struggling with my internet now. You are back. <laughs> yeah. You still want me to comment? No time. Yes, you can comment. <laughs> I know you have comments for Pamela Nota and also for Ngai Mbanje. <laughs> yeah, I have spoken with uh, Mbanje privately. Uh, Okay, for, for Nota, what she, the information that she wants to generate, I think it's already known. Effects of Lantana Camara on, on, actually on growth and development of all plant species, because allelo chemicals, they don't target one specific plant species. They target quite a diverse number of, of, of plants. Yeah. So I didn't like Yeah, his internet is not is misbehaving. Okay. Do 
Lulu, are you ready? Nota, Lulua has OD. I think they are both out now. Nota. Hello? Maybe we can move to the next. No, Lulu is the last presenter. What about the story? Story failed to connect. He sent me a message. Ah, uh, okay. Doc, I think Kudanga and Doctor or something because his end is up. Is this okay, Kudanga? Are you there, Kudanga? Okay, Dr. Tamtando is big. Hey, Dr. Tamtando, you can go ahead. But he... Nota has left the meeting, man. Ah, okay, okay. I thought it's no use. <laughs> I know I, I will talk to you. Yeah. Yes. On WhatsApp. But I think we can have overall comments from the assessors. Yeah. So we you know Lulu. So Lulu is not there anymore. Lulu and the other guy, I think we we still have two more presenters. Is it? Is it? Stole, stole failed to connect. Lulu is in the department, but I don't know what is happening. Okay. Okay. My general comment is that yeah, the presentations were okay. They were averagely okay. But the students, they really need to consult uh, with their supervisors before handing over anything to anyone. I, 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 I noticed that some other students, including mine, Yeah, that point is important. But if he, you are given the work just just before they just rushed to, to, to present <laughs> without even showing me their presentation, and that will reflect on the quality of what they present. So. I think he is having challenges with his internet. Okay. Um, 
Nota. Hello, Nota. Nota. She's loading here. She's loading here. Yes, slides. How big is the presentation? I'm not sure. What's the output of 10 minutes? Did you load the jet? Anyway, I wanted to say um, most of the presentations were generally okay. But I think those who are working on surveys, you need to do a little bit of uh, reading to raise the standard of your uh, studies to master's level. The same with the NOTA. You really need to think and improve your study because as it is, it is, I think it's BSc level. Maybe you should include things like chromatography to identify the compounds that are allelopathic in Landana Kamara extracts, or maybe to extract the allelochemicals using different uh, solvents. Um, and then for almost all the students, their statistics is not very good. I think we are going to organize the lectures on experimental designs to, to help them because the, their statistics is very bad. Not, not just the six, about 14 who presented in this group. I also received similar comments from the other groups. So I think we need to do something to assist them. It may not be their fault. But then my last comment is that you need to read a lot of articles to improve your, your writing and presentation skills. The way you presented showed that uh, you are very shallow in terms of content and also in terms of uh, scientific writing. Some of you cannot write objectives. Some of you cannot present a hypothesis properly. And some of you don't even know basic things like uh, LSD, when you perform a post hoc test, all those issues, they are very basic for someone who is doing a master. So I think you need to read a lot. I would advise that you read at least one article, I mean two properly written scientific articles per week as, as a way of improving your scientific writing skills. It's okay. I think those are my few comments. Yeah, I think we should take note of uh, those uh, comments. The other thing which we should also look into is the use of uh, software which we need, like uh, Zotero. I don't know whether you know, you know Zotero or Mendeley. When you are writing our either proposals or, or research projects, because it will become a problem when it comes to referencing, if you are doing it in manual. So the area, the better if you use either Zotero or Mendeley. Okay, we can uh, go on to the next presenter, or the last presenter. Ulurum Guyo. Thank you, Doc. Um, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Ulurum Guyo. My topic is the efficacy of synthetic pesticides and biopesticides in the management of tomato leaf minor tuta absoluta on tomato. The tuta absoluta, the leaf minor, affects uh, other solanaceous uh, crops, which are not potato, which are not tomatoes. But I've, I've decided to do my research on the tomato plant itself. For my introduction, the tomato leaf minor is a serious pest, but uh, indoor plants in greenhouse tomatoes and the field tomato. 
um, and it has been reported since uh, early 1980s. And it has spread even through, even in Zimbabwe, it's now in Ennis. It has spread through to Africa, Asia. It's all over. And also it has been reported to, um, to have resistance to, um, to some uh, active ingredients like delta methylene, abamectin, catep, and perimethylene. So, so um, my introduction is going to highlight the output of tomatoes and the trends of tomatoes through the years and how it has been affected uh, by the tomato leaf miner and how it has declined, production has declined, and also quality, and also the chemical control measures that are on the market. From your introduction, I'm going to talk about um, the problem statement. Um, tomato production is under threat of the tomato leaf miner, which is a problem in the field and also on the shelf. People buy tomatoes, and it, the, the leaf miner manifests itself itself on the on the shelf. You find the um, the lava coming outside from the inside and quality is um, distorted. Okay. Justification. Tomatoes are a daily household requirement and are also used in industry in the manufacturing process of foodstuffs. You know, the tomato sauce, the baked beans, the purees, and the many other things, the, the, the zeppelins, the potato chips. Um, so we must guard at the production of tomatoes from um, pests such as the tomato leaf miner. Um, okay. and, um, for my objectives, um, my objectives are to comparatively determine the effectiveness of different active ingredients. I'm mainly looking at um, Abamectin and um, fluobenda, fluobenda my, fluobenda my, fluobenda my, which is the active ingredient found in belt. Okay, and also to determine the viability of using a botanical extract as, as a pesticide. I'm going to be using a neem. And to determine the resistance of the tomato leaf miner to different chemical pesticides with different active ingredients. My hypothesis, the now hypothesis is there is no difference in how uh, different herbicides kill the tomato leaf miner. And the alternate hypothesis is there is a difference in how different herbicides kill the tomato leaf miner. For my materials and method, I'm going to be um, using tomato plants on, um, on red soil, that is on the CEDIC, CEDIC, the Scientific and Industrial Research Development Center, which is in Hitkiff Extension. And um, the experimental design is going to be a randomized complete block design. With four, there are going to be four blocks with four replicates. Four blocks with four replicates. For my data analysis, I'm going to be using the analysis of variants one way or another. The data will be collected on the variant insecticide that will be analyzed. Um, From, uh, from three weeks of uh, planting, once the uh, crop is established, I'll be collecting um, data on after spraying, and I'll, I'll spray after three weeks. I'll spray the pesticide after three weeks to give allowance for uh, more uh, pests to infest the, the crop. The data collected will be analyzed 
in the mean number of flies larvae, the plant will be tested for normality using the Kolmogorov smell test. For my budget, I haven't put any figures at the moment. There isn't much traveling, but then uh, since it, it is my project, I'll be traveling on the weekends. Uh, besides, um, I think that I'll be often uh, on the center. Um, I've also included airtime in bundles. I might need to make some research uh, talking to um, statistical um, statisticians um, to help solve so need airtime and also stationary reproducing and binding and also subsistence, subsistence. By subsistence, I mean things like lunch and, and break that I'll be having, drink, also contingent um, land that on the side in case of emergency. Also, the expected outcome uh, for this experiment is to convince farmers to use integrated pest management to diversify um, and also to specify active ingredients used in an effort to reduce incidences of resistance. We want to discourage them from uh, getting used to one set of um, active ingredients. Unfortunately, I couldn't um, edit my work plan very well. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Lulu, Doc. is it correct? Is it correct to say this presentation is not complete? It is complete. Hmm? It is complete. <laughs> it's complete without a budget and a work plan. <laughs> Doc, anyway, are, are you through with the, the uh, presentation? Doc, I'm sorry. I have put uh, the parameters that I'm going to to cost. But I have, I mean, have you finished the presenting? <laughs> Just finish presenting first. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. I have finished my presentation. Yeah, yeah you finished. Yes, Doc. I have okay, finished. Okay, yeah, we can take the same now. <laughs> Dr. Gary. Although she's saying it's completely even, doesn't matter all those things. <laughs> oh, Dr. Okay, Gary, let me just I throw in one question. One question. Um, yes, Doc. uh you you are only going to test for normality using the chromograph spin of spin of test what about the other assumptions of anova like randomness and homogeneity of variances do they matter or they don't Thank you, Doc, for, for the contribution. I am not very conversant with um, uh, with statistics, but I, I, I do believe they matter. I will really have to 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 to, to work on uh, my statistics. Thank you, Doc. Because for you for you to be able to do analysis of variance, three assumptions should be met. Your data should be random. It should be homogeneous and uh, it should be normal and in your uh, in your statistical procedures we only notice that you are you are only interested in no testing for normality so i thought that for you the other assumptions of anova they don't matter at all they do doc thank you so much i i, I have um quite some challenges in statistics 
that, that's why on my budget, I'm going to really engage a statistician to, um, to help me. <laughs> you don't need to engage a statistician. You need to read <laughs> your notes. But, 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 you but, 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 Thank you. Um, I, I will need more lessons. I, I thank you for um, suggesting that we, we will have a bit more on why do you sound like you are, why do you sound like you are crying? You, you sound like someone who is crying. What is the problem? I, I must admit I'm a bit nervous because when I was moving um, my stuff from Word to the um, to, to PowerPoint, I, I had some challenges and you know these these things that are not the figures that are not coming. Actually, my 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 work had figures, and now when I transfer it, the figures won't um won't appear on PowerPoint. And I'm a bit worried. Sorry to hear that. It's okay, Lulu. Is it, the honourable thing is just to admit that there are certain things that are not okay with your presentation. You're not trying. You shouldn't try to defend yourself when it's very Thank clear you, that, it's something, so that is missing. it's something that you should learn. Just to admit that uh, there are certain things that are not okay. We all make mistakes. Technology sometimes betrays us. And another point Lulu, you, is that uh, we are just trying to improve these uh, proposals, especially if you haven't started doing the experiment so that uh, you will do the right thing. It's not a criminal offense, right? So I'm just trying to Thank improve you. your, uh, your presentation. Thank you, Dom. Okay. And there's someone who is being supervised by Dr. Manyangarirwa. Dr. Manyangarirwa, is a, a part-time lecturer so you need a supervisor who is in the department for administrative purposes i can't remember what in the end that person but uh, that is karen yes yeah Another issue. Thank I you, Doc. What shall I do? Shall I um shall I resend my work plan and my my budget? I know you discussed that with your supervisor. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, Doc. And anyway, thanks very much for the presentation. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Doc. Hello, Jeff, yes. Uh, I've got a question to Dr. Kamutandu. Yeah, you can go ahead if it's not a difficult question. It's not a difficult one. Dr. Kamutandu, <laughs> you have indicated that when I do the skeleton ANOVA, I need to include, in terms of the sources of error, I need to include replication as a source of error. Can you maybe elaborate on that? Because maybe we missed it even when we, do, when we did the biometry lessons. Maybe you can elaborate on the inclusion not, of... No, no, not source of error, but source of variation. Source of variation. Okay, because source of your, variation. Your design is a BD. Your RC BD is your your design is RC BD. <laughs> I'm so not hearing you. you in that we are using an acid BD. 
Did you get that? Say that I'm not hearing him. The rep I mean, actions or blocks. Hello? Yeah, and so why dog? Yeah, okay. So what gumira wounds were papi? A panash and danzo. Okay, eh, Mataruse, and it you were you experiment in my blocks. Blocks as in what? Uh, all right. My treatments are how many times? How many How many times? How many times? How many times? How treatment is appearing five times. If can I many times? How many times? How into blocks? Yes, unem, it's, it, it, must one day, it, uh, on the layout, we have got three blocks. And uh, in each of the blocks, uh, each treatment, you will be how many times? Uh, in block one, it's appearing twice. In block two, it's appearing twice. In block three, it's appearing once. Uh, there's something wrong. Yeah, I'll tell you later. I think it's something that can be solved in this meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like uh, most of you have uh, presented. I can see story there. As we are. Ah, all right, it's okay. Yes, Doc. Emmanuel, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay. Can... Hey, you can go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I see you. Why, why it say to call sister? Share my PowerPoint. In that pagan, the present. Why end up now? Present uh, now. And it and you got to open a pop in Diago. And then you say you click on the screen. You click up against a window. Okay. Yes, sir. What uh, open a mama ma window? Ma Funny two ma small windows that run the application window. It will show away. We find the power window. I will show up. Oh. Uribi. And then the time is the interesting computer. It's okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming. 
バッチー Try to move your slides, John. Alternatively, he can quickly share it with me so that I can I, I, I can present it for him. I can show it for him, then he can just present. I don't know what you are presenting, but I'm not going to show you. Okay, I'm going to take a photo of the Indapakans present. Why not? This time, this time, try to select your entire screen tone. Right, she, she open a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Good. Right. Stole. Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Stole, can you hear me? Hello. Stole. Hello, Stole. Stole. Doctor Mabaza, Doctor Kamdan, what do we do? Maybe he can send us his uh, the presentation and he can go. Yeah. Or we can organize a, a, a small presentation with him. I don't know. Later, yeah. Yeah, Maybe. later. There's no need for him to say it. He can present. It's okay, it's no longer another time near away, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Because Arguta, I think Mike has any problem. All right. Mm. Anyway, I think we should now conclude. We have said generally the presentation is okay, but there's room to improve them. Another important issue is that uh, we need to read and consult uh, literature so that uh, it becomes easier to execute these uh, research projects 
Because if we don't consult literature, then we will have a lot of uh, problems. Uh, th this is my assessment. Any other comments before we close? Maybe some of the students have something to say. Oh, yes. <laughs> Any feedback from, uh, from the group? Whether there are some challenges when doing these uh, projects? I think uh, so far so good. But because we have got limited time now, your I input think... as our supervisors will be greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll continue to come back to you in trying to shape up and add on whatever comment which has been uh, highlighted. But I think it was a fair presentation. Thanks a lot for the comments. They will shape up our projects. Yeah, thanks very much. Another issue is that uh, don't come at the last moment to your supervisors. <laughs> Yeah, I think Doc, Doc, but you know, students always think could assist it. Nengwa ya wanda raganyanya. Ane kashlo presenta na sanditi. Ano kutumira ye proposal yake in the morning and. He or she expects you to go through it. They don't know to do business you know. So you should always work end to end in a supervisor or consult so that you are always on the same page. Like what I said, that research, yepa master, yepa BSc, even yepa PhD, it's shared work between your supervisor and yourself so if you fail you fail together if you pass you pass together you have to come to us those are my words yeah thanks Yeah. We are left with very few months. We want everyone to graduate next year. We don't want people to remain behind. Yeah, with those uh, words, I think... Uh, do, do we have any comments from the ladies? The ladies are very quiet. <laughs> Uh, just to say thank you so much. Yes, really. um, the presentations, they were, they were, it was an eye opener. Not only a gap, but uh, I think it's important to see, you know, dust yourself up, pick up, or and then to consult, like uh, Dr. Mkamtan was saying. Thank you so much for, for the guidance and the wise counsel. We will keep knocking at your mm -hmm. doors, and we really appreciate uh, effort here in USA, Amaita. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. I mean, so with those last words, I think our meeting is now closed. Thank you for hosting us, Dr. Mabasa. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Right. Let's go.